Let's jump right into it, Joe. Kick us off with number five on our Daily Top Five. Welcome to the Daily Top Five. A pretty heavy day. Coming to number five on the charts is last year's Vans World Cup of Surfing champion, Adam Melling, coming from behind in this effort to turn the heat to advance on to the round of 32. Before that moment, he was in a bit of trouble in this matchup, Dane. Yeah, it just seems like Adam Melling every year gets stronger at Sunset Beach. I mean, coming in defend, uh, defending a event champion, it just seems like he has that extra little level of confidence. He's able to hit that extra gear when he needs it, when the pressure's on. Well, he's coming into this event with a little less pressure where he came in last year needing the result, went on to win to keep his spot on the top 34. And remember last year, Dane, he was well in the running coming into pipe in the Vance Triple Crown race. Yeah, well, he definitely made his intentions clear. He said he wants to get on that Triple Crown title list and uh, coming huge here. It's going to be a big honor for him if he can get in that ring of titles. He's solid at these three event series. He took a win in Portugal, won $50,000 already this year, and he's already off to the next one. Coming in number four at the charts, world number one, Mick Fanning, ends up going down. One of the major upsets of the day today. Yeah, Kalani boy, local uh, standout in Vans Wildcard, had a great heat, Gavin Gillette as well. And uh, I spoke with Kalani earlier today. He was super excited to get a piece of the world champion, uh, Mick Fanning. So it was a tough, tough go for him, but hopefully he can recover for Pipeline and put on a good show. Strange to see him in this position. Fanning's finaled out here at Sunset in the past, and he'll have to rinse this one off quickly. This result doesn't affect the world title race, but he's clearly disappointed. Another big name that went down was the event winner at the Reef Hawaiian Pro and the leader of the Triple Crown, Michelle Berez. How shocked were you by this? I was shocked, but he didn't go down without an effort. I mean, look at the Tahitian. He's fighting every little muscle in his body to stay on that board. It was pretty unruly during the middle of the day. The winds came out of that kind of Kona direction and kind of really wreaked havoc for the boys. He had a dream, a guy having a dream run in that heat, Wade Carmichael, which made a big difference in sending out Berez. Also a former world champ and event champ in 2008. We lost C.J. Hobgood, even though he started off this heat with an 8.17. Yeah, well, that's kind of the nature of the beast out here. It seemed like two guys were in good rhythm, even a third, but it came down to getting two quality scoring rides at the end of the heat, and uh, C.J. was only able to come up with one, so he just came up just a little short. So a few big names we expect to do well to almost put them right into the final series. Upset in the round of 64, number three on the charts, a guy that needs a big result and who's won here in the past, Rioni Montero was on fire as he's still in contention to keep his spot on the world tour. Heoni is just, he's the magic man. It seems like every year he comes down to Sunset Beach, he, every year he seems like he's in the same kind of position, but he's able to put up those huge performances that we're seeing time after time. So Rioni Montero keeping his hopes alive, putting the charge forward, and keeping it going. And he's been on tour forever, Dan. He's had to re-qualify a couple times the hard way, so he knows his position of being back against the wall, needing to compete to do well. Different stories, we saw William Cardoso enter the lineup. He had a chance to advance through today. He would have taken Mitch Colburn's 10th spot on the qualifying picture. He ended up just falling short of getting the score. Yeah, you can really kind of feel the frustration in some of these guys' uh, feeling essences on the beach when they come to the shore. It's just a really challenging lineup out there. Sunset Beach has its own way of dealing with things. And unfortunately for William Cardoso and a number of guys, um, you know, it just kind of came short. The last effort just came just a little short. So with Mitch Colburn now and out of the round of 64 as well, he's still hanging on to that qualification spot, but we'll see what happens. And in the later part of this event, and obviously at the last stop on the WCT at the Pipe Masters to decide his fate. And then it was Kelly coming in at number two at the charts. How'd you like his approach out there? Going <laughs> left on a bomb, Dan. He continually proves that he's just a freak of nature. I mean, Look at that, most people are looking right, looking right. Kelly goes left, pulls in deep, no hands, just a, I, I can't say anything more other than freakishness. Well, you see a lot of people would have looked at the right and just said, well, the right's not much, I'll see what I can do with it. Kelly's able to create some magic every time when he gets in the lineup, especially at Sunset, where it's a place he didn't really like too much. He finds a moment of glory, gets almost a perfect 10, as he started off hands-free on the entry to that one, Dane. Yeah, this is comical. I mean, Kelly Slayer just is, he's always taking, looking for that unconventional thought. You know, it's like, hey, how can I challenge myself? Kelly Slater continuing to challenge himself, getting a perfect left-hand tube at Sunset Beach. Pretty interesting. It was the heat right after Mick Fanning went down, and Kelly was able to take the big win courtesy of that big left, that GoPro image on the nose of his board, one of his sponsors. And he brought us right into the tube with us. He was pretty happy riding the quad as he showed up pretty late for that heat and still threw down some big moves. 
Coming in at number one on the charts, Triple Crown Race is getting exciting. First with our defending champ, Sebastian Zietz, looks sparky this morning. Yeah, Sebastian, he showed up to play this morning. I love his action. It's just so spontaneous, so powerful, and just really raw. You never know what you're going to get with Sebastian. Today he showed up full of action, and he didn't disappoint us. Really lively off the top, always going for the rock and roll floats, has that unpredictability factor. He made the final last year. Another guy, Vans Wildcard, Dane Reynolds, is looking incredible out here. Yeah, it's really exciting to see Dane Reynolds in the title race for the Triple Crown this year. Every year he seems to come over to Hawaii, put on a great display of his surfing abilities, but kind of get in that consistency. You know, we're seeing him at Haleiwa, now having a great result here at Sunset Beach. It's really exciting times for us. So at this stage in the game, Dane Reynolds number four overall on the ratings. He's, as we move on into the round of 32, even though we lost Michelle Berez, he's still out front, but we saw some incredible surfing from Freddy Pitaccia in one of the last heats of the day, looking dynamic. He moves on. Remember, he was runner-up at the first event. Yeah, Freddy P, tons of confidence today. Just for his heat, it seemed like the wind just turned on just for his favor. So it's really awesome to see him do great. So Michelle Berez still leading with 7,200 points. Freddy Pitaccia in a close second with 6,400. Basically, if Freddy P advances out of the round of 32 to the quarters, he'll take number one heading into the next round at the Vans World Cup. Yeah, what a uh, an awesome daily top five right there, guys. And going back to Kelly's 9.87, that rare left-hander, you know, you reflect back on some of the history here at the Vans World Cup of Surfing. A couple names come to mind for me, pulling out last-minute lefts here to get a victory. Michael Ho and the late great Andy Irons. Pretty unbelievable. You know, maybe he used it a little early here at this one, but it was definitely special to see Kelly drop that 9.87 on a rare left-hand barrel out here.